Hello and welcome to the Wind Up Watch Fair New York 2022. I am thrilled to be joined by Richard Bentz of Studio Underdog. Richard, thank you so much for being a part of the show this year. Thank you for having me. Yes, my first time doing a Wind Up event, my first time in New York, let alone the States actually. So. Wow. Yeah, my pleasure. Well, on behalf of all of us, uh, welcome. It's, it's been a real treat to have you and your watches here. You brought us this lovely watermelon uh, this morning, which is very fitting. Uh, I believe a reference to the watch on your wrist. It right is, now. yeah, exactly. I feel like coming to the city, coming to New York, you can get, you know, there's anyone can do anything in this city. So a couple of weeks ago, I literally looked up watermelon carver New York lo and behold someone was able to do this so uh courier to the show this morning well it's 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 beautiful uh so so thank you for doing that and this references uh just the bright creativity uh, seen in your watches you've got a special one here uh that i want to talk about a little bit just because of the origin story with this one is rather interesting and then we'll get into some of the other colorways that you have going and what you have going on uh but talk to us about this one what is this called and how did it come about? So this is a, yeah, this is a fun little project that uh, I've kind of timed quite nicely. So it's sort of announced a couple of days ago uh, and it's here to show uh, during wind up. Essentially, um, a customer of mine who owns, owns a watermelon and also owns a mint chop chip, they reached out uh, via Instagram and I got their little message here saying that their stepdaughter, their 11 year old stepdaughter had seen their watches loved them and came up with their own sort of design uh, and sent me this drawing of their, their stepdaughter's uh, pumpkin themed oh, studio true. underdog. So I got to work and I made, made two of them. So the first one has been gifted to this, uh, this young girl. So she's hopefully wearing it to school and showing off in of front course, of her friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the second one I've got here, and this one is being uh, auctioned off a charity. So for the next week, for the next few days, uh, it's a charity auction. Uh, it's live right now. Probably ended by the time this is uh, this is going out. But it's yeah, all the proceeds are being donated to a, a charity called Mary's Meals and a fun little project, something cool to, to talk about and yeah. just a fun little community aspect to it as well. Do you have any particular connection with this uh, particular charity? I do, yeah. Uh, actually, a, a close friend of mine unfortunately passed away a few years ago and their, their family is, is quite charitable. So I, I reached out to them and you know, asked them who, do they, who would they like to work with. Uh, and this is a, a charity that they, they frequently fundraise for. So uh, okay. it's one that's close to my heart and yeah. Oh, excellent, it's beautiful. So this is a, a two parts limited edition, uh, both in good hands. Hopefully you got a chance to see this on eBay and put a bid in uh, for a good cause. The colorway is beautiful. Thank you, yeah. Very seasonal uh, yeah, here in exactly. October in New York. Uh, it fell into place at the perfect time, obviously. Halloween in the States and there's this huge thing, you know, wind up literally days before before Halloween. I feel like it was meant to be. Uh, yeah. yeah. This is a mint chip, I believe you called That's it. That's it, yeah. And this has, you can kind of tell the inspiration from these just by the name, obviously, uh, but you do a great job of capturing the inspiration of these things. How do you come up with these? Is it always so community involved or is it just you thinking of, boy, I like that color, yeah, I like these things, or I just like this ice cream? Yeah, I wish, I wish there was some sort of like eureka moment or I wish I could say, you know, all these designs were, you know, well thought through. Often it's the case I see colors that work, whether I'm eating a bowl of ice cream or a, a slice of watermelon or there's a new pair of trainers that are, or sneakers that are released. And I go, that works, let's see what it looks like. So actually the, the mint chop chip, one of the sort of the playful elements is uh, the hour markers, the little chocolate chips. So they're all slightly different, um, which is a detail that you may, may have noticed. Like when I send out a press release, I often don't like include, you know, the, the little quirks like that because it allows you to almost discover them and you, you see it and you go, hold on, what's that? And you kind of look a little deeper and it's something fun to sort of discover on your own. Yeah, that um, no, makes a lot of sense here. And it's, it's not just that, that there's a texture on the dial that I really enjoy. Uh, obviously the orientation is very unique. Uh, the asymmetry I really enjoy. And of course, these bright colors, you kind of associate it with kind of modern watches. But the case has a very traditional softness to it, especially at these square pump pushers. 
a hand wound uh, mechanical movement. Yeah. It's a really beautiful juxtaposition uh, going on here. Yeah. What is the colorway that you find yourself mostly gravitating towards when you wear? So I I most frequently wear either the watermelon or the mint shot chip. Mostly, I think, because those are the two that have the, the unique power markers. So that it's that little extra sort of design detail that, uh, you know, that charms me yeah. uh, as well. So those are the two I gravitate towards. So the hour markers here are mint chips and the hour markers on the watermelon are... Your little watermelon seeds. The little yeah. watermelon seeds, yeah, exactly. uh, natural. And this one is, you know, little uh, pumpkin seeds uh, as well. So that kind of just, it all... Yeah, all fell into place. I can't take credit for the design on that one, though. This, you know, goes out to, to the young girls. So, uh, of course. Now, the, executed beautifully. The saturation that you're able to achieve with these dials is really beautiful. Yeah. Now, you see this from across the room, and yeah. you know exactly what it is, which is a very cool quality about some of these yeah. watches. The, the, the cool thing is, as well, is I feel like I've got some amazing photography, and there's been some really awesome reviews. But when you see it in person, as well, different game you know it, which is which is crazy to say and that's what I've experienced today at the show people who have you know seen them online or even customers that have placed pre-orders this is the first time they're you know being able to see them in hand and they're you know yeah they're, they're no, it's, 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 it's been a real treat and I think that uh, a lot of people that you mentioned this is your first time in the US so this yeah, is uh, yeah. a lot of unless you own one this is kind of a lot of people's first chance to, yeah, yeah. to see one in the flesh I know you've got a few other colorways over there that are really yeah. interesting do you, are you kind of thinking of, okay, what's next? What am I gonna do next? How am I gonna keep evolving on this? Yeah, like, yeah, what yeah. can we look forward to seeing in this collection? So, at the moment, I've got four colorways, part of the core range in this Chrono series. And for my kind of, the next watch that I want to release, I want to take it to the next step and not just do an another colorway, the Chrono range, because people have seen that works and that's successful, but I think people wanna see what's next. What, what is Studio Underdog? Is it, is Studio Underdog just, you know, watermelon on a dial? If I release a, you know, a diver or a field watch, is that going to be just watermelon colors? It's not, I'm not going to give too much away. Okay. The, ne the next thing I'm developing is a field watch. Okay. Um, and where this range has been kind of innovation by design and color, the next one is, I guess, more innovation in material. Okay. And it's probably not what you're, not what you're thinking. It's, it, it's something, again, very different, very studio underdog, but in a in a different way. I know I'm being a little bit cryptic, but no, that's all right. That yeah. gives us something to look forward yeah. to, and uh, I look forward to hearing about this news uh, uh, and hopefully getting my hands on one. We yeah. can we can review one on one more than one, which would be great. Uh, Richard, it's just been a huge joy getting to meet you and discover your watches, see them in the flesh. Yeah, yeah. Which is trust me, a real experience. If you're on the fence about these. Definitely give it a shot. Uh, they're, they're, they're beautiful watches. Richard, lastly, where can people go find you? Where can they see more of your work? Where can they follow you? I think at this point, if you literally type watermelon watch into Google, yeah. I think I'm up there. So that's, you know, I feel like I've made it. It's um, him, it's him. But no, if you go to underdog.com, the O is a zero, uh, you'll find me. Instagram, Studio Underdog. Uh, yeah, or checking out a, a worn and wound article on uh, on studio yeah, underdog we, we've got a review uh by our guy uh, jelly up uh, on the site we'll leave a link to that below why the underdog so when i was coming out with a brand name there's all sorts of rules as to what makes a good brand name there's almost like a, a bullet point list of do's and don'ts and it's sort of you know a five letter word with a punchy part you know punchy sure. yeah. one of the letters after a while, I gave up. It was, you know, I, I couldn't think of anything, so I was like, screw this. I'm an underdog. I'm trying to make my way in an industry that is quite difficult to get into. I'm a designer, so it's my design studio. And the O came about pretty much, again, taking that, you know, taking that approach of who cares, where if you're trying to come up with a unique identity on like an online game or a forum, every username is taken. So yeah. you end up swapping a letter or you do, you know, wind up one, two, three. Yeah, so mine yeah. was, you know, like when you type in password and it requires a letter and you put in a number as the O. Yes. This was my, right, it's going to be unique. All it's right. not going to be taken. And it's a silly way of achieving it. And it's better than Studio Underdog one, two, three. Uh, right? Well, so, arguably, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you again for being here. Thank you for being a part of Wind Up. Uh, it's a real pleasure to meet you and see your watch. So thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks for tuning in. And until uh, next time, take care. Cheers.